All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody, and thanks for watching. So today we have a Geo 7 that's dead, completely dead. So this is monitor number uh, five. Yeah, monitor number five of seven from my buddy up in Kansas City who brought me down seven monitors earlier last week. And um, this one, he told me that he tried it on one monitor and or one tube and it didn't do anything. Or he took it off the tube that it originally was on because it didn't do anything. So he put it on another tube to turn it on to use it and it didn't work either. So it's basically dead. So I'm going to show you why it's important to do a very good thorough inspection prior to really doing anything or attempting to work on these because if we notice here, the B plus pot is missing. Somebody has yanked this B plus pot out of here. Why? Couldn't tell you. Why would you move, remove, I'm sorry, why would you remove a B plus pot from a working chassis? So that obviously tells me that there was something wrong with this and somebody uh, pilfered or pillaged the B plus pot for another application because there was something else wrong with this. So we, I didn't even bother trying to turn it on because my, this was loose. He gave me two loose G07 monitors. Uh, I'm sorry, two loose tubes and two loose chassis because he tried to do musical chassis and it didn't work out quite well. So uh, he wasn't sure which one went back to the, which tube and all that, but this one's been reworked. It's got a replacement width coil. It's got a full cap kit, original flyback. I saw some uh, strategic reflow on the bottom, but I thought, okay, so why would somebody uh, rob the B plus pot if it was working? They wouldn't do that. So I thought, okay, there has to be something else wrong with it. So going through and testing the power components here, let's go through, let's pretend the B plus pot's installed and the chassis is dead. Let's go through what you want to check on a dead G07. So, I don't know if we'll be able to do all this in frame with the meter, but we can try. Okay, so um, there is a fusible resistor, FR901, and that is this guy right here, this little white ceramic thing right there. Uh, it's supposed to be 220 ohms. So the easiest way to test this is to just check it on the back side because some of these legs can get oxidized from heat over the years. So we'll flip this over. And we'll go right here to FR901, which is right here. It's labeled on the chassis, FR901, right here, this guy right there. So we're looking for it to be 220 ohms, and we get, oh, sorry, I'm in diode mode, uh, 220. So that's good. Then we have right here FR401, fusible resistor 401. And it should be 68 ohms. And we get 69.5, close enough. So that guy is this guy right here. So those are two important components for this to function properly. Uh, and then we will go over to our fuses. Of course, you got the main AC input fuse. Should be good. We'll just put on continuity. So that one's good. Then we have F. Uh, F901 up here, which is right there. We'll test that one. That one's good. Okay, those are the most important things there. Then we have our actual uh, B plus resistor. Should be uh, 220 ohms, and we get 218. So that tells us that our voltage regulator should be good. If our voltage regulator was shorted, we'd be getting zero ohms here. Uh, but just to test the voltage regulator, we can put it back in diode mode, put our negative lead on one of the screws here for the frame of it. Then we touch each leg should be around 0.45 voltage drop, I believe. No, I take that back. No, one leg should be 0 0.18, 0 0.18, some, somewhere around there because we're reading through the B plus resistor. So one should be around 0.18, the other one should be about 0.45. So I don't know which one it is, but... Okay, there's our 0 .5, 0 0.5 voltage drop, round up, round down, depending on what type of chassis you're working on. But there's our 0 0.5, so that's okay. The other leg should be about 0 0.18, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 0 0.183 or 0.181, because again, we're reading through the B plus resistors. So voltage regulator is good. Oh, my phone's ringing. Hang on a second. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so now if we go to the HOT, uh, we should go again. 
negative in one of the screw heads to get the frame of the HOT and then each leg should be 0.5 voltage drop. So in frame here, all right. So one leg, point, there's our 0.45. Okay, 0.45, other leg over here is 0.45. Okay, so HOT is good. Uh, now let's grab this resistor down here. This, this is supposed to be a two ohm resistor down here by the filter cap. Um, so if we go to ohms and we'll read this one, should be at two ohms here. Oh, 5.2K. Are we on there properly? Uh, leg, yeah, 5.2K. Let's try the bottom side. R902 is what that is. 5.2K. Well, that could be a problem. It's odd though. I mean, if you had a B plus pot in here and that was so far out of tolerance, is it because the B plus pot's not installed? I don't know. You'd think that if this was installed, you'd try to operate it. You'd think the f one of the fuses would go, either the, the fusible resistors or one of the main fuses. I, that's odd. Uh, I don't think this was hooked up to a non-isolation transformer setup because that would have taken one of the fuses out and one of the rectifier diodes. Rectifier diodes are always the first thing to get taken out in that situation. Well, I guess let's just take this resistor out of here and see if it still reads 5.2K because I don't think I ever saw that before. All right, well that's out. Let's see here, out of circuit. If you look on it right here, you can see it says two ohms, right there, two ohms. So if it was 2K ohm, it'd be 2K ohm, but this is the symbol two ohms. So this is supposed to be two ohms. And if we do this, we get 5.2K. So bad resistor, hmm. All right, well, let's put that out of the way. And I'll have to grab, yeah, R902. I'll have to grab one from a donor chassis. I've got a whole bunch of, well, a whole bunch. I got like three GO7 parts chassis that I can steal this from, but uh, let's clear the hole out here. Okay, well, let me cut away and grab one and, uh, Get it installed and grab a B plus pot and and give this a little bit more thorough inspection. Make sure we don't have any don't have any cracked joints or broken pads or anything like that. Then we'll give it a try. So hang on one moment. I'll be right back. Okay, right over off camera here in my parts cabinet, I have a Geo Seven parts chassis here that's been uh, seen better days to use the uh, parlance of our time. And look at that, just so happens to have a nicer, newer B plus pot. So we will rob this B plus pot and we will rob this resistor, assuming that it's good. I haven't tested it. Let's make sure it's two ohms here. And hey, all right, 2.4. So, huh, I can't recall ever seeing this particular resistor go way out of tolerance like that. Grab this B plus pot while we're at it, and okay, got it. All right, we'll set this monster aside here, and let's put this in here. He says, as he realizes that it's never that easy. Because it's easier, easier said than done. If you know that song, you might want to schedule a colonoscopy for yourself.
All right, so that's in there now. Let's clean up these B plus legs here real quick. Uh, I need to use the braid on these. Okay, that should work. Put this back. And let's get this in here. Ah, uh, come on, you rat. You rat bastard. I always thought that should have been a villain for the uh, Ninja Turtles, the, oh, it's Rat Bastard, but don't think that would have gone over well. All right, now I can let go of it. that flow through won't you flow 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 pancreatic juice flow flow into the duodenum won't you flow 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 pancreatic juice all right so let's make sure we get a good reading on that there's 83 ohms but this is 6.2 and 82 all right so that should be good. I can use another one for verification, but right about right about there is where we want it. B plus should be 120. On the GO7, you want B plus to read 120 volts DC. And we read on the regulated side of the re of the B plus resistor, which is this right there. Um, so Pretty sure it's this one. It, uh, yeah, I'm 99% sure it's the one with the white wire, but we'll find out. But anyway, so 120 volts DC, and we'll set this right about there. Uh, all right, so we've got our B plus pot installed, and it's in there. We've got our replacement resistor. Everything else checked okay. Let's give it a visual, and let's just take a look at things. We're going to need to reflow all the video header pins, but they seem... Uh, the red is slightly cracked, but it'll be okay just to make sure it powers on. We can do reflow afterward. We're not worried about that at the moment. Um, someone's reflowed IC1. I hope they haven't replaced it. I hope we don't, I hope we don't have IC1 problems. They may have replaced IC1, because if you, if you look at the flow chart, for the GO7, I think it talks about replacing IC501 if you have a dead GO7. I think it talks about IC501, but it might have been dead. I think I think now that I, now that I give this some thought in the old noggin, I think someone probably capped this and replaced IC501 and did all all other kinds of stuff trying to figure out why it was dead, and it was dead because R902 was out of out of spec. And I think that's what most of this is. Most of this work was done to do, to try and figure out why it was dead. Uh, but normally I think you can take out, uh, I think you can remove X701, this guy right here, if you think it's uh, bad and it should power up, but you have no x-ray protection with that transistor out of there. I, but don't quote me. So uh, looking at this, I, I think this looks fine enough to turn on and try and see if it works. So let's do that. We got our resistor replaced, B plus resistor installed. Everything else checked okay, so we're good to turn it on to see if it even operates, and then we can kind of go from there. So let's do that, see what we get. All right, so we're all hooked up, ready to go. We got anode, neck, yoke, ground, power. We don't need video. I'm only interested in whether or not it powers up. If it powers up, we'll shut it down and hook up video, and there's no remote board because all the pots are on the chassis. So I've got the B plus pot set roughly where it needs to be for 120. We'll probably have to adjust it. It's probably not perfect. Let's see if I can grab my driver in preparation. And I also have B plus hooked up here, or I'm sorry, the meter. Uh, 
So we're on the regulated side there with the white wire for the B plus resistor and I have my ground here on the frame and we're hooked up of course like so. All right. So let's see if uh, our only problem was the bad resistor and the missing B plus pot. Here we go. One, two, three. Mm, it comes right on. And look at that. <laughs> I couldn't have shot that better. Awesome. Um, okay. Yeah, let's turn up our screen pot and just make sure we don't have any kind of collapse or anything. Nope. Hey, full raster. Awesome. So, off it goes. Was this our only problem? Interesting. I don't think I ever saw one of these fail with one of those before. But, all right, yeah, we're secure in here. Let's uh, see if I can give it a video signal. So the G07 requires a specific hookup here. Uh, let's see if I can, I'm gonna need to use two hands here. So basically, uh, on the sink pins, uh, you see that there's two separate connectors there. The, the five pin there is for your RGB and ground, and the three pin, is that five, one, two, three, six pin, sorry, the six pin. The three pin is for your sync. Now, pins two and three are sync. Now, for standard JAMA games that have the uh, the combined sync signal or negative sync, if you will, uh, you want to jumper the sync from pin three to pin two. So it's the opposite. Like on the K7000, you want to have sync on pin 10 only. If you imagine this like a K7000, you got the six pins there, and then pin seven is actually the keyway, so there's no pin seven, and pin eight, nine, ten is that three pin connector. So normally you'd have sync on pin 10 only, which in this case is pin three. But for the G07, it's, it's a different animal, and you need to actually jumper the sync over to pin nine and 10, which in this case is two and three. So for most standard Wells Gardner monitors, you wanna have the negative sync on pin 10 only, the last pin only, which in this case is pin three. But for this monster, you need to jumper it over to pin two and three. So I have to hook up the, the video signal here and jumper, put a jumper in across the pin three and two here. So give me a moment, I'll come back and have that done and we'll test out the video. All right, so test pattern generator is hooked up. We've got it rather precariously jumpered through here. So we got the RGB ground hooked up to the main connector and then the sink is split off to go to pins two and three, just kind of shoved in there. It's not professional, that's why this is the amateur channel, but it's all hooked up, ready to go, so let's turn it on and let's see what we get. We want to maintain, verify we can maintain 120 with an actual video signal, so all right, here we go. One, two, three. Okay, it comes back on. With the video signal, we're at 120.6 versus 0.5, but that's fine. And well, it takes a while, doesn't it? There it goes. Hey, look at that. We're shifted down a little bit, but look at that. Awesome. Oh, now we're down to 120.2, so even better to closer to 120. Let's shift to RGB. Oh, we're inverted from uh, this test switch being on four. Let's flip four. There we have it. Awesome. Uh, need to... Sh Let's see if we can shift the image a little bit. Vertical shift is this jumper. There's a jumper here for vertical shift and three pins and horizontal shift. So let's move this to center and see if that puts it back to where it needs to be. Nope, not quite. Uh, let's zoom out a bit. No, that didn't work. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a dummy. It needs to be the horizontal center. So we need to shift the horizontal because it's sideways. I, I just had a brain fart. So I need to shift the horizontal up a little bit because you can see, let's turn the raster up a little bit. There we go. So you can see that it's too far down this way compared to down here. So let's move the horizontal. I'm sure some of you were screaming, no, that's horizontal, dummy. Well, okay, let's, okay, that's a little bit. And if we go to all the other peg, all right. Hmm, weird. I guess that's all the way that it goes, yeah? Okay, well, uh, again, that's, I don't really put too much faith in that because this is the test pattern generator. After all, we need to put an actual PCB on this, but it's operational and working. Look at that, oh my gosh, and it's actually down to 120.0. And I just eyeballed that from previous experience, so wow. 
Okay, well, um, let's look at convergence here. Beautiful RGB. Convergence on this is pretty good. Amazing. Okay, this is an original G07 setup. Uh, it's even still got the G07 sticker right there. So, yeah, we have an operational monitor, and this might be the quickest dead G07 repair I've ever done. <laughs> Missing B plus spot and a bad R902. Is it R9? I think it's 902. Either way. Uh, yeah, well, there you go. I'm going to take it off here, do some reflow, and give it some more testing, adjust colors and stuff. But yeah, when I adjust colors, I just put everything to the center. Like, look how off these are. See how I just take everything and put it to dead center and adjust as needed from there. Sorry about that. I kind of got that out of frame. But put that to center, that to center, and that. So now all of our colors are centered, and we can turn. We're a bit too bright on our brightness, so we'll turn that down a bit. I'd say right about there. And let's go back to RGB now. Oh, way too bright. Jeez, yike. Yikes. Right about there. Okay, and yeah, it's pretty good. Let's go back to color bars here. There we go. Well, yeah, I'd say we have a successful repair. It looks pretty darn good. I'll give it an actual PCB signal and mess with colors and get all that adjusted as well. But this looks pretty good just the way that it is. And, of course, this is a good screen here for testing your uh, white balance because if you want to turn, the background should always be black. So you can see here that that, uh, that is too high. And we turn it down until the background is black which is about right there. So, yeah. Okay, well, nice, quick, and easy fix this time. <laughs> I've, I've never had a G07 be that easy. I, I was certain that we were in for a uh, quite a wild ride, but we had one failed component in a missing B-plus pod. So, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Like, share, and subscribe. I got another G07 after this one right on the heels. I have no idea what's wrong with it because it was loose off the frame as well. So we'll dive into that next and see what is wrong with that one and see if we can get that one working. So appreciate it and we'll see you then.